Welcome to the Intuitive Hour with psychic medium, author, and intuitive life coach, Michelle Beltran. The Intuitive Hour will empower you to learn how to magnify your intuitive voice. Listen in and expand your understanding of what it means to be psychic and how to awaken, amplify, and trust your inner voice. Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is the Intuitive Hour, Awaken Your Inner Voice. I'm delighted that you're here with me. I always appreciate that you've taken some time in your busy schedules to quiet your mind and dive into intuition and psychic development and just take some time for you. All right. Today we're talking about some techniques to help you in removing and or evicting low entities or low vibration energies. And I'd like to begin today's episode with a very wonderful Cherokee story that I felt was a a good place to begin today. A wise old man is talking to his grandson. He explains that there is a terrible battle between two wolves taking place every day inside all people. These two animals symbolize two opposing forces. One is evil. The old man tells his grandson, it is anger, it is envy, greed, arrogance, and sadness. It's the feeling of inferiority and the ego The other force is kindness, joy, love, hope, serenity, humility, things like compassion and peace. The grandfather explains that that the two wolves battle within each of us every day. When the young Cherokee boy asks, his grandfather, which wolf will win the battle, the grandfather simply responds, the one you feed will win. So, which wolf are you feeding? Wherever you put your focus is what you will attract. Many of you know this. But ask yourself, Are you focusing on what's good in your life? Or are you letting toxic relationship thoughts or things hold you back or limit you? So I thought this was a wonderful way to begin this segment on low vibration energies. Are you allowing that in? Are you feeding that energy? Understand that there's a layer of energy that surrounds your physical body. That energy field is called the aura. Many of you may already know this, so it's a reminder, but a good one. If you're feeling out of sorts or not like yourself, like something in your space, something is invading your space, or perhaps even like you can't function, That can be because this auric field is cluttered with energy gunk. You may not understand why lethargic feelings or defeated thoughts are present if you have that gunk in your space. You might even feel you're somehow bringing that low energy to you, that you're bringing it, as if you were a magnet for dark energy or negativity. So caring for this auric field becomes just as important as caring for your physical body is. It requires taking your power back, cleaning your energy body, and evicting any low entities or energies that may have accumulated or became present over time. Toxic or low vibration energies have no place in your life. 
You and you alone control what comes into your world, into that auric field, literally and energetically. This simple awareness will allow you to attract good experiences, good people and energies going forward. All right, now that we have that straight, let's look at some next steps for this. As a start, you've got to understand how your energy works. All things, even the tangible computer that may be in front of you now or the phone you're holding as you're uh, uh, reading this or listening to this or that's near you, even those tangible firm items have energy. Indeed, it's denser energy, but it is energy. We as humans, as we know, are also made up of energy. So the people, the thoughts you think, and the things around you are energy, and they affect your personal energy field in either a positive or negative way, depending on your perspective. At all times, however, you are at the helm. Nothing comes through to you that you don't choose or desire. You control the energy that you allow. And in turn, you control the energy you choose to hold on to for the long term. So what are dark forces or lower astral beings? Why are they here? How do we evict them? We'll talk about that today and in a moment here. Understand, though, that as there is light, there is dark. And I bring this topic up to create awareness about the darkness and how to navigate through it, but not in a sense of worry that it overtakes you. Today we're talking about all of this and uh, I'm excited to give you a few techniques that are available to you as you move forward in life, in your intuitive development. Uh, that will support you in keeping the pure positive essence in your space at all times. Okay, let's first uh, talk about the steps to remove low vibration energy. First of all, as we begin any of our work in intuitive development, spiritual growth, uh, personal development, uh, state a prayer of protection and ask your guides to come in and support you. Be mindful of relaxing, taking breaths to drop you into that space of relaxation. I like to take three to five deep belly breaths. Breathe in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Bring your awareness to the sensations in your body quieting your mind and relaxing. Next, imagine in your mind's eye a suspicious entity or energy. What would that look like? It could be a picture of fear or worry that has been plaguing you for quite a time. You might see an object Maybe you're just feeling an emotion. If you're feeling an emotion, what would that emotion look like and see that in your mind's eye? As you're doing this work, remember, you have more power than it does. Physical beings have more power than spirit beings and low energies or entities. Any darker forces or lower energies feed off our energy. And they will try to create situations. They're mischievous. They may create situations of sad or upset or angry emotions. Know that that's not you. That's ego or that's a low energy. It is separate from you. See it as separate from you. In the moment you do that, you disempower it.
The dark force may attempt to disrupt your visualization by means of intimidating and trying to frighten you. Again, you are in charge. It is separate from you. You are ever safe, protected in the golden divine energy of the higher in this work at all times. You are in charge and must be heard. Now, as you look at that low energy or entity or dark force, whatever image you have given it, or the fear, ask it how long it's been with you and why. It's okay to be curious about this. It's okay to ask. By doing this, the low energy doesn't suddenly leap on you or overtake you. Sometimes we have that fear that by giving it thought that happens. It does not. You can query it and safely so. You might have other questions you'd like to ask. Do so now. Next, as you're ready, tell this energy it's time to go back to the white light where it originally came from. Tell this energy and remember you're at the helm, it must listen. Tell it it has five seconds to choose to leave on its own or you'll proceed with removal of it. Command, not demand, but command Let it never return again. All right. Many times as we remove or get rid of a low energy and do this kind of work, it may attempt to manipulate our visualization or disrupt the process. So you might try imagining that you have a bucket, if you will, of what I like to call frozen energy. Pour this over the object, uh, uh, the entity, so that it can no longer interfere. It's frozen. Now the entity has no power to move, change, or disrupt your visualization. The last thing I would suggest is to imagine as a, as a third option for removal of this low energy, imagine a giant syringe and needle. Picture the syringe filling up with brilliant white light or golden divine energy and tell the entity you're planning on injecting it with the needle. Usually, a low entity or fear will disappear immediately. If you have a strong-willed one present, (laughs) it may stick around and challenge you a bit. Sometimes there's a mischievous energy around lower forces of this nature. Imagine, though, that the enormous needle is entering uh, entering the spirit body of the entity and then slowly squeeze this white divine light, golden divine light into it. Your work is of light and goodness as you do this. Watch as the white light engulfs the entity from head to toe. The entity is at peace now and is returning to the place it came from. All right, three simple techniques to support you in removing of these lower energies if they do present for you from time to time. Congratulations on your first low vibration eviction. You'll use these techniques going forward at various times to heal in your dreams and meditation or for your own personal endeavors. Uh, perhaps as you, after you've been in a chaotic space or near people who come with low energy, 
this visualization can be very helpful after those experiences to clean out your space. As some homework for you in the week ahead, I would encourage you to create a few techniques of your own using your own imagination or creativity regarding evictions or getting rid, rid of a dark force or low astral entity. There's no right or wrong. I'm suggesting to you today three ways that work for me and that I teach and that are successful. You might find a unique, different way that works for you. But do spend five minutes using this technique, practicing with it five or ten minutes. Remember to always use the golden divine energy of the higher as you do this work and invite your guides in for assistance. Okay, next, I want to talk about a question a student had recently on this topic. The student asked if thinking about low vibration entities invites them back in. Really good question. So I want to share it today. And the response to that is, no, it sure absolutely does not. (laughs) So the thought of the low energy, the thought in and of itself does not invite in a low energy in the strictest sense, particularly short, fleeting, or momentary thoughts. Darker entities don't just show up because you think of them. Your continued thought and worry over time, however, brings low energy in, in general, to your space. And indeed, you may then see that manifest in a variety of ways, like people, negative people repeating in your life or one thing after the other going wrong that day. So in a general sense, staying in that worry space, that low energy does beget low energy experiences happen, happening repeatedly, but you don't, through your thought, bring in a low spirit specifically or thinking of a darker energy does not bring them in. It's the continued repeated thought over time that brings in general low energy to your space. The most important thing is to catch yourself after your fleeting thought or worry. Then honor yourself for catching yourself. If you've worked with me before, you've heard me say that you cannot shift away from something that is not serving you if you can't see you're doing it. So bravo to you that you have caught yourself in this worry space. Right? Now, simply shift into new and better positive thought of what you do desire. All right, let's talk a little bit about daily energy balance and clarity going forward. Now that you have a few techniques here to remove low energies or entities, and I will also remind you, we didn't talk about it today, but I have an episode talking about the protection rows to support you in creating healthy boundaries and good positive essence in your space. That's another episode here on the intuitive hour I would refer you to as a supportive tool. Um, But over time, uh, keep in mind that low energies are, are acquired. They don't just show up. They didn't just appear. Rather, over time, they arrived and you just didn't catch it. And so that stuck with you and that sludge or that gunk that we talked about grew. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about daily balance and clarity so you can catch those things, clear out your energy, and maintain uh, positive energy around you at all times. The first thing to think about is your self-talk. Think about what you're saying to yourself. If you're saying, I don't want another bad day, for example, you just brought another bad day to you. How? Because by saying, no, I don't want a particular thing, it's just like saying yes to it. So it comes. 
you said yes to a bad day by the mere fact that you gave attention to that bad day. So, what do you do? You say yes to what you do want. Fuel the good wolf. And say things like, Life is good. I intend happy. I have all the time I need to do all I need to today. I feel safe and loved today and every day. Whatever it is to you, be very mindful of your self-talk. Next, I would highly suggest taking a look at the people and environment around you. Uh, First and foremost, challenging people. You know these people. We all do. They feel heavy. When you're around them, you feel heavy too. You find yourself with a general sense of not liking how you feel before, during, and after you're around these people. Perhaps they influence you to do things or make choices you normally wouldn't. So catch yourself in the midst of these feelings around this kind of person, these people, and consider some cleanup in your world by removing them. Take your power back from anyone in your life who is toxic, be they family, friends, or even professional career relationships. Make a conscious choice to employ uh, these tools we've talked about, the protection rose, uh, and other uh, protection prayer, other things we've talked about at the intuitive hour, hour while you're near these people, and make sure that if you are near them, it's as little of time as possible. Also, if you're needing to do an energy releasing meditation to support you in setting healthy boundaries around, uh, with people around you or experiences from your past or your presence, I will then also highly recommend the energy cord releasing meditation also here at the intuitive hour. It is indeed possible that you could be carrying past residual low energy that it's time to get rid of. Uh, This energy cord releasing meditation will assist you in that as well. Okay, as we come to a close, I'd like to talk about troubling places, experiences, or events. So to begin, think for a moment about those things in your life that bring you joy. What are they? A wonderful dinner with family, yoga class, your pets, an exciting musical performance, the laughter of your son or daughter, Those joy moments, those things that fill you up, think of them now. As you think of these experiences, notice your energy. You immediately had some positive thought and feeling. Was it peace? Ease? Comfort? gratitude, maybe it was abundance. Wonderful. Now, think of things, places, or experiences in your life or day that don't bring you joy. Loud, busy stores or an airport traffic jams, a crisis in the news, a funeral you attended, what are your emotions now as you think of these places or experiences? Surely You were feeling anxiety, heaviness, fear. 
perhaps some grief emotions began to come into your space that overtook you as you simply thought of this, as you recalled these experiences that weren't so joyful. So having done this simple thought exercise, I want you to consider two things. First, your immediate emotional response to the joy versus the lack of joy experiences. You likely went from happy to sad in seconds as you merely thought of these experiences. This should be very clear proof to you how powerful your emotions are influenced by the thought of an experience in just a few moments. Second, realize then that you actually may be inviting in negative energy without even knowing it. When you think of something joyful or not so joyful in your day, So when you have been driving in a traffic jam, for example, you can then take that emotion of that experience with you to the extent that it lingers with you all day. So be sure to clear out your energy after having been at one of these chaotic places and or events. If possible, limit your time in them. Remember, it's the good wolf. We want to thrive. So in the spirit of the good wolf, make a list of all the things in your life that fill you up and bring you joy. Grow your good wolf joy list. All right, everyone. We are at the end of our session. In summary, I just want to say to you that the universe will honor your effort and your intention to be protected. It doesn't take long for you to establish a daily routine of envisioning your life and the energy around you safe, well, and full of love and light as your daily norm. Remember that any Routine is an ongoing process that only becomes a habit with practice and consistency. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. As always, if there are any questions or comments, please do reach out at mbeltran at michellebeltran.com. I look forward to meeting up with you again at our next episode of The Intuitive Hour. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks for listening to The Intuitive Hour with Michelle Beltran. If you like what you heard, please share our podcast with a friend. And be sure to visit michellebeltran.com to get Michelle's popular Develop Your Clairvoyance ebook.